here from Westfield, Massachusetts, is Joe the Biker. Joe the Biker, I'm here today to talk about bullying. I got something to say. You gotta stand up. Say no to fear, cause you have the power to make it disappear. It might be hard, but pay the cost. You gotta put a stop to it. You're the boss. You're okay just the way you are. Believe in yourself, and you'll go far. So don't be a fool, cause it ain't really cool. If you're a bully, follow my rules that everybody here has a right to be a respected part of our society. I think it's very important that when you see people that look different that you try to accept them. Realizing that you should listen to what they have to say and watch the way they act because that will truly tell you who they are. I've written a couple of books and my first book is called Yubby, The Fall and Rise of an Everyday Joe. And you might say, what the heck is a yubby? Well, I looked like that up to about eighth grade in uh, grammar school. And it was around fourth grade uh, when they started calling me yubby. It was kids just picking on me at school. But it wasn't just the name calling. It was the mean things they did to me. The practical jokes. All those things had an impact on me from the fourth to the eighth grade. And it led me down a certain path in life. And that's why I'm here today to share you my, a little bit of my story so you can see the path that life can take sometimes. And you don't even realize why you do things. A lot of the kids, when they used to tease me and call me names, had a laugh. What they didn't realize is that when I went home at night, I'd sit on my bed and cry. I, I've cried many a nights as a young man, trying to understand what was so different about me, what was so wrong about me, that kids had to do this to me every single day of my life. So in time, I started really to feel bad about myself. I, I've actually stood on the floodgates of the Housatonic River in Adams, Massachusetts, and thought of jumping off that floodgate three times in my life. As I stood there trying to say, the easiest solution is just to end it all. I cannot take this pain any longer. I can't take this torture. And it's funny because again, the kids at school are just having a laugh at school. They don't realize that I'm up on those floodgates thinking about taking my life. Because it led me down a path. I really felt bad about myself. I had low self-esteem. I weighed 280 pounds by the time I was an eighth grader. And I went on into high school, and I started doing alcohol, and I started doing drugs. And so now I learned that I could have control and power. And I started to become very angry. Got me into college. I lost all my weight. I went down to 190 pounds when I was a freshman in college. And all of a sudden, now it was time to rock and roll. Joined a fraternity, more drugs, more alcohol. The only reason I was so aggressive is because of an anger I had inside me to have power over other people, like all those kids when I was a youngster had power over me and abused me. So now I became the bully. And I could back it up. I started working out, bar fights, a lot of aggressive behavior. Graduated from college, had a substance abuse problem. I lost my first professional job, but that didn't change my life. I was kind of an arrogant guy, and I continued down my path. And one day, I was in an automobile accident. And that changed my life forever. It took me 17 years to come back to health. I lost the use of my left arm for five years, and so I was desperate. I was so desperate to heal because I couldn't live that way. I started to read, discovered meditation. And the reason I share this is because it was the meditation over years that disclosed something very important to me. That the reason I was such an angry, bitter guy for all those years, now I'm 30 years old, was because of what happened to me when I was this big. Everything that has ever happened to you from the day you were born is recorded back here. And bad experiences that you have when you're young 
stay with you and define you. So already before I got into high school, because of the anger I had towards myself and the other people, I hated myself. I wanted to destroy myself, and I took every opportunity to do exactly that. And in those meditations, I learned one most important lesson, that I was really yubby. I was that guy, him, inside. I was a warm, sensitive, loving individual. I learned how to love myself. I learned how to respect myself. I learned how to put value on myself. And when I learned that, I started to learn how to treat other people. I learned how to forgive myself for all my screw-ups. And because I learned how to forgive myself, I learned how to forgive other people for what they did. I learned that I can no longer judge people because everybody in this room, you're no more than like me, just another human being with an accumulation of life experiences that got you where you are today. And that's what defines you. I had a happy ending. My happy ending is that at one point in my life, I learned that I had a purpose here on this planet. And my purpose was to serve people. Little thing inside called Yubby. I'm not embarrassed about it, and I love them very much. And I hope that each and every one of you can find that very, very beautiful part inside you that defines, really, really defines you. Today I use Yubby as an acronym, and we're going to talk about a few of these things today. With the Y, to stand up and be able to tell an adult. You have to unite as a community and create a community where everybody's respected and protected. You have to be understanding that it's really not you who has the problem, it's the bully who has the problem. You also have to be aware there's consequences. We're going to talk about the next letter, I, intervening. And finally, as I mentioned before, each and every one of you were given a gift. A very special gift when you were born. The big why, and that is, you have to stand up and tell an adult. And that's the hardest part. If you are being targeted, if people are being mean, to you, the hardest part is to stand up. Fight for your rights. Tell an adult. Every adult in this school, every teacher, counselor, nurse, people in the cafeteria, Every adult in the school is here to keep you safe and protect you. You can trust them. The hardest part is to have the courage to stand up and say, listen, this is happening. I want it to stop. What happened with Phoebe Prince and Carl Joseph Walk? They couldn't stop. They didn't think they could stop what was happening to them. That's why the first and the most important thing you have to do, anyone in this audience today, that if you start to feel bad about yourself, that's when you have to stand up. You have to go and tell an adult so you can get it to stop. You don't want to find them yourself where Phoebe was, where I was, where Carl was. Things will change in life, as I have discovered. What do you think about the way that Phoebe Prince solved her problem? Anybody want to share? Do you think it was pretty awful? Yeah. And pretty sad, isn't it? That somebody would go to that extent, right? Well, what would you do? If kids were really hurting you and, and bothering you, uh, would you feel lonely like she did and go and hurt yourself? No, I would talk to someone. You would talk to somebody like what, an adult or a yeah. kid? Yeah. An adult. All right. Why do, you think, why do you think that Phoebe Prince and Carl could not reach out before they did their desperate act? They get be, be ridiculed. Okay, good answer. When you can stand up and say, that's mean, walk away, they're going to look for somebody else. You have a right to be here. You have a right to look the way you look. You have the right to think the way you think. You have the right to be here. Love yourself. Stand up for yourself. But let's turn it to the other side. Let's talk about those that go and make fun of somebody. If you're part of a group, and you got your boys or your girls, and you're making fun of somebody, and you're picking on them, you can't have self-respect. It don't work that way. When you have self-respect, you're empathetic. You feel sensitive to how other people feel. 
And it's better to be outside of a group and have respect for yourself than be inside of the in-group and hurt other people. Because that's you're just as bad as the bully. But it takes guts. It takes a power of one. Something you see in yourself that gives you the courage to stand up and say, no, I don't want to be part of this group. I don't accept what they're doing. I'm going my own way. That takes guts. What makes somebody tough is to be able to stand up for what is right. What tough is, is to be able to walk away from a group that is doing mean things and say, I don't get into it, man. I don't have time for it. See ya. Everybody in this room today is a role model. And you're a role model to other students in your classroom. How do you stop bullying? Anybody got a, an opinion about how you stop bullying? There isn't a teacher, there's not a principal, there is not an adult in this school right now that can stop bullying. None of them can stop it. The only people that can stop bullying in your school are you. And you, like I say in my rap song, you are the ones that make it disappear. So if you don't know how to stop it, man, then it ain't gonna disappear. Amen to that, huh? Yeah. And when I talk to schools, I talk about creating a community. Everybody here, including all the adults at your school, everybody's part of a community. And you have to be a community where people are respected and, and you have to start making people feel like they're all apart, no matter, again, what they believe. No matter if they're big, no matter if they're small, no matter their color, whatever the case may be, everybody has to be included. How would you feel if you were the part of a group where somebody ended up taking their own life, how would you feel if you were part of that group? Guilty. If you're part of that group, walk away from it because you might be the cause for somebody trying to hurt himself. And that goes to understand that it's the bully who has the problem, not you. Something is inadequate about a bully that they got to go and make fun of somebody else to make them feel good, to give them power. And just know that it's that other person who feels inadequate, who doesn't feel good about themselves, who has something lacking in them that causes them to be mean. And it's not you. You're okay just the way you are. And you have to be aware if you're on the internet that cyberbullying is against the law too. And you can get snagged nowadays. And cyberbullying has to do with tormenting. You got somebody that you want to say something bad to? Say it to their face. You're going to have to find out in life that you're going to have to deal with conflict when you leave this school, you get a job, you have a boss, you have other peers at work, you're going to have to deal with them. If you have feelings about something, please take the time and say it to their face. You don't have to do it behind their back. You don't have to try to make fun of somebody on the internet. You want to make fun of yourself, take your picture and put all kinds of wigglies on it and show it to everybody in the world. Cool, man, do it. You have to also be conscientious about it and be smart. You know, how many schools I go to where counselors tell me, I go to their Facebook and they got 25, 35 pictures on there and they're drinking. Don't put anything out there that you don't want ever to come back and haunt you because it can. And it could, if you're doing something mean to someone, have a permanent effect. If you see someone being hurt, please do something. You don't have to jump into fight. Just put yourself into that person's body who's on the ground. You have to think about how that person feels. Please do something about it. We're all part of the same community. We have to stand up for each other. I talk about your special talent, that gift that everyone here received when you were born. Each and every one, including all the adults in this room, were given a talent when you were born. You have to discover it. You have to try different things. When you connect to that, that makes you feel good about you. It gives you more self-respect for yourself. And then you use that special talent in serving other people. So if you could all please repeat after me. My school is a community.